let's say I've got a bunch of these knives, and I've got a thousand people to market them to, and I want to know what price to set to maximize my revenue. Well, I do a little bit of research and find that I, I'm pretty sure that if I give these away, charge zero for them, 700 people are going to want them. So I'm going to be able to uh, move 700 of these. Okay. Also, if I charge anything up to $3, at least one person is going to want one. But over $3, nobody's going to want one. So $3 is the price of which, beyond which I don't sell any. Now let's think about what this information might give us about a graph of X, the number sold, versus P, the price. Now what we normally think of as the X axis is now the P axis. And what we normally think of as the Y axis is the X axis. And there's no Y involved here. So we have a graph here of X versus P. And I've got a point marked here on the X axis. Okay, this point represents what? It represents the number sold if the price is zero. So this is the number sold if the price is zero. And I expect that at price zero, I'll move as many of them as I can. I won't ever uh, sell more than the number of people that just kind of that want one uh, if they're given away. So I'm going to call this X max. Now X, again, stands for the number sold. Max means maximum. It means the maximum number I could sell would be 700. And again, that would occur when the price is zero. And I say sell uh, at zero price. I wouldn't really be selling. Um, then the other bit of information we have is that people will pay up to $3, but not more. At least someone will pay up to $3 and not more. So this point on the graph uh, represents uh, the $3 price. Okay, This point represents the 700 that I can get rid of if I give them away for free. This represents the $3 price which corresponds to what? X value zero. Okay, value of this axis is zero at this point, meaning I sell none if I put the price at $3. Okay? Now, we expect that as the price rises, the number I'm going to sell will fall. Now, we don't know if it's going to fall uh, like this, or like this, or it's like a straight line. But the simplest assumption we can make is that this is going to be a straight line, that the number I sell versus the price is going to be a straight line that goes directly from X max on the number sold axis to the 700 in this case, to my P max, <coughs> the $3 of the price at which I sell none. So that if I want to put the price, if this represents $3, then this halfway point would represent a dollar fifty, and uh, if we go up to the graph and over, we see that we would be at the halfway point between zero and x max as well. So we'd have half of x max. If x max is seven hundred and p max is uh, three dollars, then we expect the point right in the middle of this graph to represent a dollar and a half and three hundred and fifty sales. This is a linear function. Its form is, well, now instead of y equals mx plus b, it's going to be x equals mp plus b. What's the slope of this graph? You should pause and figure out the slope of this graph. From this point to this point, what's the slope? Well, you should have paused. Hopefully you did. Okay, I'm going to. indicate a fundamental triangle. Now, this really should be on top of the lines. I've drawn it a little bit inside of the lines. But this is a fundamental triangle from this point to this point. What's the rise? What's the run? Slope is rise divided by run. Uh, if we go from this point to this point, then we're going to follow a path in this direction. And the rise is going to be negative x max. And the run is going to be P max. So M 
Now this right now the word slope. Slope is the rise divided by the run. That's negative x max over p max. So x equals m p plus b. Okay, m is the slope. That's going to be negative x max over p max. B is what? It's the vertical axis intercept. In this case, the vertical axis is x, so it'd be the x intercept. But don't let that terminology fool you. Uh, it's just the vertical axis intercept, and it is x max. So that our equation is x equals negative x max over p max times p plus the vertical axis intercept, which is x max. That's our function. So if we know x max and we know p max, we can find this. If x max is 700 or p max is $3, then Our equation is, and this is called the demand function, you could write it out yourself, you might want to pause and do that, x equals negative x max over p max, that's going to be negative 700 over three dollars multiplied by P, the price. Note the price will be probably in dollars, so the dollars here will divide the dollars of the price, plus X max, which is 700. Of course, I can divide 700 by 3. I get approximately 270, 266.666 repeating, but I'm just going to round that up to 270 P plus 700, and I should have written a unit in for the uh, negative 270, and I'm going to stop and do that. Okay, 700 over $3 is 270 over the unit dollar. I'm going to write the reciprocal unit dollar as dollar raised to the negative 1. When multiplied by a price in dollars, this is going to give us a number sold. Now, alternatively, we sometimes do P versus X, which is the way it makes more sense to somebody who's used to this being the variable dependent on this variable. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the one that makes more sense because the number sold depends on the price that we set. Okay, so we control the price. That's what goes on the horizontal axis, and the number controlled by the price, which is the number sold in this case, goes on the x-axis. So this is the standard dependent variable, independent variable form of the demand function. But there's another form, and that other form has its uses as well. So let's do that over here. Now, as we've seen, there's some price at which we expect not to sell any. The threshold price at which we not expect not to sell any, we call P max. And there's some number that we can move if we give them away. And that's going to be our X max. So we have uh, P max on the P axis, X max on the X axis. If we uh, set the price at P max, that's when we're going to reach uh, zero sales. If we set the price at zero, we're going to sell as many as people would ever want, and that's going to be our X max. And we simply assume, 
in this model that the function is linear. So we have a straight line graph. So this now is a function, but this function is p equals mx plus b. And that looks a little more familiar to most of us because that's almost like y equals mx plus b, the typical way we express the slope intercept form of the equation of a straight line. Okay? Now, the slope here is what? Well, I'm not going to go through drawing the fundamental triangle here. I'm just going to say, well, from here to here, the rise is negative px, p max, and the run is x max. So that m, our slope, is negative p max over x max plus b, b being the vertical axis intercept, which is just p max. Now, what I would hope you would be able to do in order to understand these functions is understand that there's some maximum number <coughs> uh, that we can sell or what, what or get rid of. Uh, that's going to be x max, and it's going to occur on the x axis because that's where price is zero, and we expect to move the greatest number when the price is zero. And that there's a number p max on the p axis, and the interpretation there is, as x approaches zero, the number you sell uh, approaches p max. And what I just said wasn't right, so let me reinterpret this x max. Um, okay. This point represents the, never mind, I said that right. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, got it backwards almost. Okay, so again, um, P max is the price at which we don't sell any. Okay, so X going to zero means the number we sell approaches zero, and as the number we sell approaches zero, the price is going to approach this maximum. Now, what we control, and the kind of source of my momentary confusion there, and it can be confusing if you're used to this being the dependent, independent variable, um, we don't control how many we sell. We control what the price is, and the number we sell results from that. Okay, in any case, uh, we can note that P max occurs on the P axis here and occurs on the p-axis here. And x max occurs on the x-axis here and on the axis we've marked as the x-axis here. So that these two graphs are just uh, kind of inverses of one another. Okay, now, in our given problem, uh, where x max is 700 and p max is $3, And I'm being inconsistent here. Let me fix this. Okay, now if we put the graph in this order, we get this equation. Now, if x max is 700 and p max is $3, then what's our demand function? Well, it's p equals negative p max over x max plus p max. Can you write that function out? I'm going to write it off camera because we're running short on time here. Okay, hopefully you've done that. And what you would write is P equals negative P max over X max. That would be negative $3 over 700 multiplied by X. And I didn't write that down, did I? So it would be negative P max over X max times X plus P max. So we put in P max and X max, negative $3 and 700 times X plus P max, which is $3. And we get negative point zero zero four three dollars times x plus three dollars for this four three has been rounded to the nearest uh, well we've rounded this to two significant figures for this situation same situation there are two forms of the demand function one from this picture one from this picture. This one is x equals negative 270p plus 700. This is p equals negative 0.0043x plus 3. These equations are, in fact, up to round off the same. If you solve this one for p, you get this one. If you solve this one for x, you get this one. So the ordered pairs that satisfy this also satisfy this and vice versa.